So today we're going to talk about the best resources for medical school, period. Let's get into it. All right, guys, what's going on? Welcome back to the MD Journey, a channel completely dedicated to helping you succeed on your medical journey with less stress. Today, we're finally gonna do a video about the best medical school resources that are out there. Now, I can't believe that we've been through 200 videos into the YouTube channel, as well as like 100 plus episodes on the podcast and still haven't talked about all the best resources in one place. And so today, we're gonna talk about the resources that I did use in medical school that really just made a big difference in my long-term knowledge, as well as resources that kind of came out after the fact and that I wish that I had used more. And if there's a resource that I don't mention, make sure you comment down below so I can also give you my insight. But let's get into resource number one, which is the most commonly used resource in medical school. And yes, I'm talking about Anki. Now, most students in medical school or about to go into medical school are very familiar with Anki. So to make sure this video is not longer than it needs to be, I'll link down below a full playlist as well as some of the advanced strategies that I use to make Anki really work for me. But the beauty of Anki is one, it starts to immediately get you into that review and testing phase as soon as you're done making your flashcards. And two, it forces you to learn the weak topics more than it does your strengths. And with the sheer amount of information there is in medical school, you really wanna make sure that your weaknesses are where you focus a majority of your time. And the other main benefit for Anki for medical students on a budget is that one, it's free unless you're using the iOS app, which again, I think is totally worth it. But again, if you wanna see my exact step-by-step -step method of how I used Anki in medical school, as well as some of the advanced techniques that I use that other medical students weren't, I'll link down below that video as well as other videos in my playlist down below. Now, resource number two is USMLERx. Now I've mentioned this throughout the channel that I think it's really important that medical students have some sorts of practice exams given to them. Now, some institutions will give you access to either their own set of practice questions or give you access to some other cubing, but I truly enjoy USMLERx mainly for the fact that they come from the same creators who make first aid. And because first aid is such a commonly used resource for students who are studying for USMLE step one, having a question bank made by those same creators to learn those high yield facts is just such a win-win. And if you're listening to this and asking about what about this question bank and this question bank, again, I think practice questions in itself are amazing. But if you don't have one, the USMLERx would be the question bank I would recommend. But mainly because the questions aren't super difficult. Instead, they're mainly focused on making sure you understand the high yield material inside of first aid. And two, there's still that very nice clinical vignette style that all of the USMLE tests have. And so if I was a brand new medical student, one of the things I'd be sure to do would be find some time on the weekend or a day of the weekday that wasn't as busy and spend maybe 20 to 30 minutes doing some practice questions and keeping a list of all the things I was missing because ideally it would align to the high yield material that I should be knowing for my class topics. And if you want to know all the resources that I loved using for step one, check out some of the videos as well as blog posts that we have for you here on the channel. Now resource number three is more about the style of the resource and less about the company making them. And so I'm going to talk about specifically about sketchy medical as well as picmonic. But when you have as much information that medical school throws at you, you want to make sure that you build long-term retention as quickly as possible. And one of the best ways to apply long-term attention to medical topics is to have very concrete images that then can be related to the topics. And two companies that do this very, very well is both Sketchy Medical and Picmonic, which can break down essentially any topic from a bacteria to pharmaceuticals to an overall kind of disease process and give you very nice images that can help you learn those materials long term. And personally, I don't think one resource is necessarily better than others. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. And so I've made a few videos, particularly on Picmonic, that you guys can check out on this channel if you're learning how to do things like study for step one step two, as well as learning during your preclinical classes. But regardless of which resource or company you ultimately choose to go with, I think it's more important, just like we talked about with the practice questions, that you have time in your weekday and weekend to do these videos and make sure that long-term retention is actually being built. For the rest of this episode, I want to transition from the resource that help you do well on kind of your board exams and like your initial medical knowledge to instead resources that are truly designed to help you actually become a really good doctor, which is ultimately all of our goals. So resource number four that I absolutely love that I've now used more in residence is the Curbside Insiders podcast. If you wish you could be that fly on the wall and understand exactly how these professionals and future professionals will go about solving and treating these patients, that's exactly where the Curbside Insiders podcast is perfect for you. On most of my drives now into the hospital, this is exactly what I listen to because it's great for me to one, be able to test my current medical knowledge and two, also be able to understand how people think about one small pit of somebody's history, somebody's lab, and being able to extrapolate what other possibilities and differentials may be included. Being a great doctor is truly founded on your ability to do critical thinking. And one of the best ways to do this is to see how other great physicians are able to take some small piece of information and extrapolate it to all the possibilities that a patient could have. And so if you're in medical school or if you're a pre-med or even if you're in residency already, definitely recommend checking out this podcast. And finally, resource number five, in case you're not a fan of podcasts, which is like, come on, who are you? One of the resources that I absolutely love as a medical 
chemical resonant is actually inspires a lot of the cases that are talked about in the curbsider insider podcast is the human deoxide so similar to the curbsiders podcast where you're getting a bits of information at a time ultimately to get your differential diagnosis the human dx app is basically a community of doctors and healthcare professionals who are taking some of their most interesting cases and putting it into a bit by bit piece of information and so here for example i have an 81 year old female with spontaneous bruising and i'm given just three bits of information and i have to then go ahead and put in some basic differentials of what i think she may have and then i can click for the next piece of information so it's a nice way for you to essentially think and learn the same ways that we do when we have a new patient when i admit somebody new i have some initial kind of pieces of information about them and who they are what medications they may take and then i take their labs their vitals and their other complaints and try to put it together ultimately to the diagnosis that they have and so the very cool thing about the human dx app is that obviously people are going to be sharing some very interesting cases things that are like zebras in medicine and so you'll be able to test yourself to see if you even remember some of the things that you're learning in medical school today and personally for me it's not really about getting the case right or wrong like 80 percent of the time i'm wrong but the actual knowledge comes from the fact of one, learning what the right answer was, and two, learning how somebody was to think about this case in a step-by-step -step manner in case I was to run into that patient ever in the future. And so if you're on your medical journey and you're tired of just being in the books and you want to spend maybe just a few minutes every single day doing this, I simply do this as I'm going up and down the elevator in the hospital, doing one or two cases, you know, every half day really helps me just build my critical thinking muscle, which is what all this career is all about. But those guys are some of my top resources for medical school. I know, I know, I know that there's resources that I didn't talk about. If there are questions about a certain resource, go ahead and comment them down below. I'll obviously cover an individual resource in its own video or episode. So if you're interested in a very specific one, go ahead and check out the channel. But with that being said, if you are on your medical journey and you're like, well, I want more step-by-step -step help. I want somebody to teach me how to study. I want somebody to teach me how to be more productive, how to manage their stress. I just want somebody to walk me through what I need to know and then ignore the rest. Then go ahead and consider joining the MD Trainer community by subscribing to the YouTube channel, subscribe to our podcast, follow me on Instagram, make sure you do that. And also consider checking out some of the step-by-step -step programs that we have for you here at the MD Trainer. But with that being said, guys, thank you so much for making it to the end. If you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and just small request. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. Consider hitting that subscribe button to get two videos like this on a weekly basis. If you're listening to other podcasts, hit that follow and subscribe button to your favorite podcast platform. And if you really enjoyed this episode, you'll probably enjoy this episode as well, how I used Anki like a pro in medical school. But with that being said, guys, thank you as always for being a part of my journey. Hopefully I was a little help to you on yours and I'll see you guys as always in the next one. Peace.